Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport and today was the Sao Paulo Ipiri, the second time Formula E has raced in Brazil and this was an okay race, um, I enjoyed it enough. Not a whole lot happened and really the only swapping of positions, there wasn't necessarily a lot of overtaking but we did get a lot of swapping of positions with attack mode, some interesting strategies, it was suggested that a lot of people would save some attack mode for the end of the race, that wasn't really true, by the halfway point pretty much all of the attack mode had been used, we had a couple of safety car periods interrupt the racing as well, but nothing major and I think this race will have a dramatic effect on the championship or in fact it did. Nick Cassidy crashing out was a huge blow to his title chances because he had built up quite a lead and he was in the top half of the points yet again but then he I think he takes some damage to his front wing it came off went under his wheel and he just went straight on at left bend and hit the wall pretty hard his race was over with Pascal Verlein finishing well again and he could have finished better to be honest it means that Cassidy and Verlein have pulled a bit of a gap in the championship but they are pretty close together for first and second Mitch Evans did a really good job in this race and I think he will be really disheartened that he didn't win but that move from Sandberg at the end of the race was magnificent to watch it was supreme round the outside I think he just really caught Mitch Evans unaware and I do praise Mitch Evans for not just driving into him. I think for the first time, maybe Mitch Evans was thinking about the championship. We've seen before where Mitch Evans gets into these situations and contact is made, especially between him and Sam Bird last year, if you remember, a couple of times. So they're not teammates anymore, and this time they didn't actually manage to avoid each other. But it was a great move from Sam Bird, and to take his first win in a couple of years, McLaren's first Formula E win, Pretty big deal. Now, Sam Bird is one of the winningest drivers in Formula E history. He's taken 12 wins. I think maybe Sebastian Bremi has one or two more. And maybe Degrassi and Verne are around it. But he really has been the best Formula E driver never to be champion. Which is kind of a shame in itself. But he is such a class driver. And such a good point scorer for any team he drives for. His time at Jaguar was a little disappointing. But we saw at Virgin for the, what was it, five or six seasons he was there, maybe even more than that, how good he could be. He seemed to have a lot of bad luck, he did occasionally make mistakes, and he just never put a consistent title challenge together. But he is a great driver on his day, and for McLaren, I think this is a big moment for them, and I hope to see the orange car taking more wins in Formula E. Jake Hughes and the other McLaren did retire, so it wasn't an all-round positive for McLaren but I think they'll take a lot from this win it was a big deal for them Mitch Evans second place decent result for him and Jaguar keep up a decent scoring rate in the constructors title Oliver Rowland pulled off a mega move on the last lap as well we didn't really see much of it but he got past Pascal Verlein and Jake Dennis for third that's his second podium in a row I think Oliver Rowland is one of those drivers who kind of slips under the radar because he doesn't tend to do that great in the championship. You'll usually see him around the midpoint. I think he's sort of like, you know, if you say midfield runner, a picture of Oliver Rowland appears. But he has taken eight podiums in Formula E, and yes, he's been driving in it a fair old while now. But he has scored 33 points this year with two third places in a row for Nissan, a team that has struggled over the last few years. He's doing pretty well and not really getting enough credit for it, to be honest. Verline and Dennis are consistent as always and both still have chances of winning this title. Jake Dennis is only fifth in the championship, but he has scored points at every race, I think. And he's not that far behind. Uh, Verline just Mr. Consistent this year so far. He is in second place and only just behind Nick Cassidy. So his title charge is well and truly on. Behind them, we had some interesting drivers. Antonio Felix da Costa finishing sixth in the Porsche was his first finish of the year in the points. It's been a dreadful start to the year for him and it has hurt Porsche's chances in the team's title. But I mean, he's a good driver as well and it's 
you wouldn't expect a run like that to go on too long. And we, I think we'll see podiums, maybe a win from DaCosta before the end of the year. So uh, driver of the day, though, was definitely Maximilian Winter because he had to start last. He looked quick in qualifying, to be fair. I was surprised he didn't get pole. But he was supremely quick. But he had to start last. I think it was just changing parts of the car. And he got like a 40 place grid drop, but because he couldn't actually drop 40 places, he had to do, he had to start last and do a 10 second stop and go penalty in the pits, which sucks. But then with the first safety car, he was able to pull it back up to the field and he made up places really quick. And he was absolutely fantastic. And in the end, he finished eighth, which was a fantastic drive from him. Really, really star quality. Whereas the likes of his Daruvula, his teammate, is still really struggling to get to grips with Formula E. I think only Dan Tictum, Jehan Daruvula and Nick DeVries have, are yet to score points. But Nick DeVries actually got the fastest lap, but because he wasn't in the points, he didn't get the point for fastest lap, which is a bit of a shame. Remember, he is a former champion in this division, but with Mahindra, it's been a tough year. Van Dorn and Verne were a little disappointing. They looked quick as well, and they were in the final eight. But that qualifying pace just didn't translate to race pace and they did drop back. Bit of a shame, but I think this title is wide, wide open. We have the Toikyo e Prix next, which is an unknown quantity to everyone in Formula E. And that is going to be one to watch. I think that could... Like, I've got a feeling something's going to happen at that race, which is going to be key to the championship. That one is not to be missed. Uh, I'm very excited for that one. Uh... As for everything else, I think Jaguar are still the team to beat. Nick Cassidy has a strong grasp on the championship, but Mitch Evans is doing well as well. I think he had a bit of a slow start of the championship, but is starting to come good now as well. So it's close. I think both Jaguar drivers, Pascal Wehrlein, Jake Dennis, Vern Van Dorn, these are all drivers you can't count out. They could all be in title contention at the last race because they're all really good drivers and it looks closely matched. That's what keeps Formula E exciting. Nothing is certain. Just because Jaguar are flying high right now, it would only take a few races for them to drop like a stone. And it's that unpredictability that makes Formula E very watchable. It really is the exception that proves the rule. Electric motor racing is dead on its feet. No one's that interested in it. The technology is falling behind manufacturers are moving away from it hydrogen is the next big thing in clean emission motoring and electric is just proven to be too dangerous it's too cumbersome too difficult it's annoying i don't think fans really engage with it it's hard to take electric motorsport seriously a e, formula e i love formula e but they do sound like RC cars, and I do miss like the V12 Formula 1 engines. It's a shame we can't have stuff like that anymore. But I think Electric has definitely had its day, with the exception of Formula E, which does seem to thrive despite its handicap, and the handicap being the electric power. It's going to be interesting once we get to Mizano and we get the fast charging, and how that's implemented and how that affects the racing and how that affects the future of electric motorsport because maybe that's the key ingredient that turns it from a big flop that pretty much every race series is moving away from to actually we need to take notice of this. I don't have high hopes for it and I wonder about Formula E's future with Extreme E going to Hydrogen next year and we have the World Rallycross um, inviting petrol cars back or at least hybrids, I wasn't really sure. And I honestly, I can see any electric series out there moving away from it. I feel sorry for the Scandinavian touring cars who cancelled last year's championship to really get electric ready for 2024, just as everyone else moves away from it. But then who really pays attention to the Scandinavian touring cars except me and a few Swedes? Other than that, Formula E, Sao Paulo was pretty good. And I think the next one's a month away. So... Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Did you enjoy the Formula E? Um, what do you think of Formula E at the moment? Do you think it has a future or do you think it needs to change with the times? Uh, remember to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. There will be more motorsport content incoming very shortly. So, have a good one.